Hey, this is Dr. Drew. And today I wanna to talk about the treatment and prevention of kidney stones, which is easily one of the most painful things someone can go through. And this may start as just sort of diffuse low back pain. It can be on the flank or one side and it can kind of wrap around to the hip and groin. And usually it's nine or 10 out of 10 pain that sends people to the emergency room. Now, if you're someone that has more mild stones or maybe they've been found on a scan and it's kind of just like watch and wait, some of the stuff I talk about will be helpful for that as well. And certainly if you've had recurrent kidney stone issues in the past, you might be interested in figuring out how can I prevent this from happening again? So again, if it's really acute, really bad pain, 10 out of 10, you gotta go to the ER room. A lot of what I'm talking about, if you were to use, it's just too late at that point. But if you have stones that they're monitoring or you've had recurrence of kidney stones in the past, then you're gonna wanna check ahead here as I go through all the stuff I found helpful with patients over the years. The first and foremost, most important thing with the kidneys and kidney stones is make sure you're adequately hydrated. Quite often I'll see people get hit with kidney stones when they are dehydrated. Maybe they're drinking too much alcohol, they're playing sporting events on the weekend in the summer, or they just don't drink a lot of water and it sets them up for a perfect storm of too much solute and not enough fluid to wash it out. Typically, kidney stones are gonna be made up of calcium oxalate, which means you have calcium binding to oxalates. And in case you don't know what the heck those are, those are found in plants, primarily greens and variations of, I'm gonna flash a bunch of foods up here in a second that are high in oxalates because if you consume too many high oxalate foods and then you have calcium that can bind with it, that can cause stones to jam up the kidneys. So quite often for recurrent kidney issues, we'll look at lowering oxalate intake in the diet. And yes, a lot of these foods that you're looking at are quite healthy and well, I thought tons of like kale and spinach is good and I should blend it in my smoothie. A lot of these greens drinks, especially raw ones, or blended in the smoothie, that can be a recipe for disaster in someone that's dealing with kidney stones or it could cause kidney stones. So yes, your green drinks could cause kidney stones. That's why I always tell people, steaming and cooking vegetables is important because it deactivates the oxalates in the food. So when you have raw spinach, it exists in nature with oxalates, it actually is a protective constituent of the plant so that critters and bunnies and things that eat the spinach will not be able to. They either won't like the taste or the oxalates will hurt their stomach. And so it's a protective mechanism within the plant. But when you steam and cook spinach, it deactivates the oxalates. So that's something to consider. I don't usually recommend kale, period. I just find it can be a digestive irritant to a lot of people, super high in oxalates. But again, if you're going to consume those two, you shouldn't do a lot raw. You certainly shouldn't blend it or juice it all the time. And you're gonna wanna steam and cook those when possible. So look at that high oxalate food list and see how much of that am I doing? The next thing is calcium homeostasis in the body. If you are someone who's a stone bearer or you've had a lot in the past, you're gonna to wanna to look at your calcium levels. You're gonna to wanna to get your parathyroid hormone levels checked. So you have your thyroid here and then there's four little glands adjacent to it called the parathyroid. And that helps regulate calcium in the body. And if there's a problem with the parathyroid, you have parathyroid disease, it's gonna cause more calcium to be and end up in the urine and the kidneys, and that's a bad spot because then it can again bind with things, create stones, so get the calcium checked, get the kidneys checked, get the parathyroid checked, and then that's a really good sort of baseline testing that you need to do. Now with respect to calcium homeostasis in the body, there's some other nutrients that are really important. You basically just want calcium in the bones and teeth or able to leave by the urine. That's really it, calcium should be in the bones and teeth, able to leave by the urine. When it starts depositing in the soft tissues, the arteries, tendons in your shoulders, or in this case, making stones in your kidneys, that's not where calcium should be. And what helps regulate calcium in your body and absorption of it is vitamin D. So making sure your vitamin D is optimized, but more importantly, vitamin K2 signals calcium in the blood to go to the bones and teeth. So making sure you have adequate vitamin D, vitamin K2, calcium intake, hydration, etc. properly functioning kidneys, not too many oxalates. Now you're kind of paving the way for calcium to make its way through your body, end up where it should and not end up where it shouldn't be. Now some nutrients you can consider. So maybe they're observing and just watching and waiting with a stone that's just kind of sitting in your kidney. It hasn't jammed up anywhere. It's not causing pain, but what can I do to maybe prevent stones or dissolve them? So potassium citrate orally, magnesium citrate orally and vitamin B6 are all really important nutrients 
to help dissolve and prevent kidney stone formation. So vitamin B6, usually for females, 300 milligrams a day of pyridoxine hydrochloride. And then for males, maybe around 100 milligrams a day. Magnesium, citrate or bisglycinate, probably somewhere between four to 600 milligrams a day. And then potassium, potassium should be coming in at around 4,700 milligrams a day from the diet and supplements combined. So if you're nowhere near hitting that 4,700, you can use some potassium citrate tablets. They're generally only available in like 100 milligrams per tablet. So you're gonna have to take a good handful of them if you're gonna be supplementing with potassium, but anywhere between 500 and 1,000 extra a day of that is a Good idea. And then the other big one when it comes to generating stones or just environment where people can generate more stones is you always got to look back to the gut. And there is some evidence showing that dysbiosis and having too many urea producing species inside the digestive system is a potential risk factor for generating more stones. So that might be something to look into as well, uh, whether it's stool testing, looking at the uh, microbial balance to see what kind of bugs you have too much of that you might need to do some rearranging of. Maybe you've had a lot of food and um, poisonings, illness while traveling, antibiotics, anti-yeast, antifungals over the years, and it's completely turned your gut upside down and you might have the wrong kind of species spitting off the wrong kind of molecules, which can add up with more risk factors towards kidney stones, okay? So that's a little bit more of a down the rabbit hole approach, but uh, hopefully you found those other things helpful. And yes, just cause it's healthy, just cause people are drinking these green smoothies and drinks and blending up all these raw things, doesn't necessarily mean it's healthy for you and certainly keeping the dose in mind is really important. Make sure you get all these other nutrients looked after, have proper workups done. You shouldn't have blinding pain in your back that sends you to the ER room over and over again without somebody asking what is going on? Why is the body so imbalanced? That's what's leading to this? You need to keep asking these questions and figure it out, okay? Otherwise, if you have questions, comments, please drop them below. And if someone in your world would benefit from this video, please share it with them. And as always, Thank you for watching.